This is a 68-year-old male with left shoulder pain for many years. The AP image is shown here, and we can see that the humeral head has migrated superiorly. Looking at the inferior border of the scapula and the inferior border of the humeral head, we can see a distinct step off. In a normal shoulder, the scapula and humerus would form a gothic arch. You can also see that there has been articulation between the humeral head and the acromion. Notice the acromion has remodeled and is cupping the humeral head. This has been called acetabularization of the acromion. This is the axillary view, and the plan is to perform a reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Make the incision lateral to the axilla and right along the delta pectoral interval. Gelpies are placed within the subcutaneous layer. Enter the clavipectoral fascia layer lateral to the coracoid brachialis muscle belly. Use the Derrick retractor to gently develop the subdeltoid space because the deltoid will need to be retracted. This will make room for the deltoid brown retractor. Place the deltoid brown retractor. You can see the bare head in absence of a cuff. Place the dull homen underneath the conjoint tendon group. You can see there is no subscapularis. With this system, while performing a reverse, some surgeons choose not to repair the subscapularis. Place a homen around the humerus and release the inferior capsule all the way to the six o'clock position of the humerus. Arm position is crucial during the humeral head resection. Extend, adduct, externally rotate the arm. This will provide access to reach the seven o'clock position. Replace the narrow homen with a wide homen to help expose the humeral head. Make the cut distal of the anatomic neck of the humerus, about two to five millimeters. In this case, the cut is made right underneath the osteophyte around the anatomic neck. Keep the head resection for bone grafting later. Notice that the patient has no bicep tendon. Ream sequentially until you feel light cortical chatter. The starting point should be about one centimeter posterior from the bicipital groove. Broach the corresponding size to the reamer using the version guide in line with the forearm. This will give you 20 degrees of retroversion. For the reverse primary, we trial the stem to be sure that the correct tension is achieved.
Now remove the retractors and proceed to the glenoid. Place a modified facuta on the posterior glenoid. Release any adhesions that are at the base of the coracoid. Use a Batman retractor on the anterior glenoid. Remove labral remnants. Release the capsule around the glenoid periphery by running your bovie along the glenoid rim. Align the drill guide so the inferior rim of the glenoid is in line with inferior rim of the guide. There is a pilot tipped and a cannulated option for reaming the glenoid. In this case, we show the pilot tipped technique. Use the 2 mm drill to drill your pilot hole for reaming. Begin reaming with the starter reamer first. Continue reaming until desired size. Base plate implant can be opened. The center peg can be drilled through the drill guide or by using a freehand technique. Using the coring reamer or a rangeur, obtain the bone graft from the resected humeral head. Then, fill the central cage of the base plate with the bone graft material. Insert the base plate into the glenoid using the base plate impactor. This base plate offers six screw options. Drill by cortical with the 3.2 millimeter drill, making sure to observe the color coding on the drill bit to determine screw length. There is also a standard depth gauge if preferred. In this case, three screws were used, superior, inferior, and superior anterior. Screw sizes are determined by the color-coded drill bit. However, there is a standard depth gauge if desired. Now, place your screws and tighten by hand. Apply locking caps. Note, all screws are variable axis up to 30 degrees and all screws are compression screws with locking caps.
there are multiple instrument options for the glenosphere insertion. In this case, the pilot-tipped inserter is made to engage into the center hole of the base plate to assist in alignment. Once the glenosphere is seated, apply digital pressure and insert the locking screw. Proceed to humeral trialing. The humeral liner and tray is snapped together and can be inserted in one piece. Insert the humeral tray, making sure the laser line is lined up with the lateral fin. Internally rotate, plus axial traction, to relocate for trialing. In this case, you can see the surgeon fighting against the conjoined tendon. This will require the surgeon to retract the tendon while applying pressure on the arm. Check for stability and place the arm in extension and internal rotation. The humerus is then dislocated and the trial is removed. This system allows for in situ or back table assembly. The implant is inserted into the corresponding stem size on the back table stand. The humeral tray with the reverse torque screw is inserted into the stem with the laser line lined up to the lateral fin. Tighten the reverse torque screw by hand, then apply 11 newton meters of force to break off the screw and engage the Morse taper. Place the polyurethane insert with the lateral edge engaged first. Then, use the impactor and impact in a downward force to engage the medial edge of the liner. Implant the definitive stem. Reduce the joint and test range of motion.